up to any questions you may have. Hi, uh, Kyle Ireland with South sure. Dakota Broadcasters. So yesterday, your chief of staff likened transgender people in sports and trans transgender issues to terrorism. Is this your administration's view of transgender people in sports? And can you clearly say what your view of transgender people is? Well, no, and that's not Mark's heart. And so I want you to know that this issue on girls playing only in girls sports is just a fairness issue. It's about Title IX and defending an opportunity to have a level playing field for our girls to compete. We want our girls to be able to uh, have a chance to be successful, go on to college, have the chance to earn scholarships and play professional sports if they would like to. So this legislation is moving through the process and I'm hopeful people will support it. Um, follow up question. How would you explain the need for a bill like Senate Bill 46 to a transgender person if you had to look at them in the eye across the table? This bill is referencing biological sex and uh, it is specifically saying that those of the same biological sex in girls sports should compete in girls sports. And that's legitimately what the bill is about. The policy discussion is a fairness issue. There are many different activities and competitions in the state where biological sex doesn't matter, uh, debate, academics, uh, things of that nature. But when it comes to sporting events where it's an athletic competition, it does make a difference because the biology is different, and that's why in South Dakota this bill is being brought forward. Governor, good morning. Austin yep. Goss, Dakota News Now. Uh, members of the Select Impeachment Committee have mm -hmm. been receiving phone calls regarding trying to, from telemarketers, trying to move the impeachment process forward, encouraging them to impeach Attorney General Jason Roundsburg. Are you aware of those phone calls and their origins? Do you have a comment on them? I don't really, other than the speaker is the one who told me about them and made me aware. Lisa Rubinger, SDPB. Um, school districts had not heard about um, the prayer bill that came up during committee. Uh, shooting range neighbors in, in Meade County hadn't heard from Game Fish and Parks about the proposed shooting range. Um, and then campground, private campground owners and, and Hills residents are concerned about the ex campground mm -hmm. expansion there. I guess, how would you describe your administration's outreach in light of um, these bills um, having, I guess, failed initially, but also with such opposition to them? Well, I would, I would say that our outreach has been excellent and far and above beyond what it's been in the past. Uh, I'll remind everybody that uh, with legislators, we held telephone town halls for months previous to session, getting their thoughts and feelings. Uh, when they ask why we prioritize certain projects, it was because legislators brought them to us and said it was important to them. They wanted child care addressed. They wanted housing addressed. They wanted infrastructure addressed. Several legislators brought the rifle range and the campsites to our attention and said it was a priority. And we did outreach and and spoke uh, with campground owners, with people in the Black Hills before these proposals were ever included in my budget. And uh, this is what legislating is. It's a discussion. This is an opportunity for the public to come and tell us their thoughts and feelings on these policies as well. And uh, I would say standard operating procedures. So we always have debate and discussion over priorities. Um, I would see this as no different. As to the prayer in schools, I was disappointed to see that bill fail. I, I think that within um, several months here, we'll get some kind of guidance or regulation out of the federal government, which will make it confusing for our schools on if our kids can pray in schools. Um, uh, and I think that having a clear direction that it is an option for our kids and our school districts, for our school board members to rely on, for our administration to rely on, uh, that there is a statute that says they do and can pray in school if they want to would have been helpful. Uh, if you remember, back in 2018, uh, I campaigned on putting more civics and history into our classrooms. I uh, introduced a bill in 2019, talked about it during my State of the State address. It was the one of the standing ovations I got during that State of the State address was that we did need more history and civics into our classrooms. And then Republican legislators killed the bill. And then two years later, it's a national discussion and everybody across the country recognizes that we need more of our history taught to our kids so they understand the failures of the past, but also um, the lessons of the past and how we can do better. So, uh, you know, I, this feels a little bit like that same type of pattern. I'm hopeful that we don't run into a situation where we wish we had this bill back, but 
but it is something that I truly believed that our students in South Dakota deserve to know that if they wanted to pray in school that they could. They have the freedom to do that under our Constitution. I want to go back to Austin's question. You're, you had said, you know, he asked you if you had a comment and if you were aware of their origins. Mm -hmm. You said, I don't. No. Do you mean you, you aren't aware of their origins or you didn't have a comment? I'm not aware of their origins and I wasn't aware that those were even happening until the speaker texted me a couple days ago. Uh, Landon, 